We live in terribly exciting times. Modern, si modern science as we speak is tr radically transforming our concepts of ourselves. In fact, it's moving so rapidly in so many different disciplines that I'm reminded of that FDD florist guy. Do you guys remember him? He was a mercurial figure who would uh, you know, wear a golden hat and he you know, paraded around the world uh, delivering flowers. That, uh, that character sort of makes me think that, you know, that science has in enormous capacities to change our lives and is continually doing it. In the field of genetic testing, the Human Genome Project is transforming our concepts of our human origins, where we come from as people, changing our concepts of health, offering all kinds of new possibilities, and it also has the capacity and the potential of changing our very identity. Who we are as human beings is, in fact, being transfigured constantly changed by the work of many scientists as we speak, and I think we've heard many of them this evening. Uh, that notion that science can change our identity is really amazing because I've had an identity crisis for as long as I can remember. As since I was a seven-year-old kid, I've often wondered, who am I? I've asked myself the question, who am I or what am I? And I think that's a question that many of you have asked yourselves out, out there. Who we are is a central question of our sense of identity, and it's a question that I think increasingly people around the planet are asking. And modern science has amazing capacity to, in fact, help us to understand who we are. A couple of months ago, I did something that I think is rather transgressive, maybe a little bold, maybe a little risk-taking. I actually went on a, on a site, National Geographic site, and I had my DNA tested. I sent my sample in to find out, and in fact, I availed myself of the tools of modern science to find out a little bit more about who I am as a human being. It was an, a terribly exciting project, and it actually began as an academic exercise in the classroom. I was teaching Latin American art history, and my college students, like all college students, were wrestling with terminology. How do you define a Latin American, a Hispanic, a Latino? What are these terms? What do these terms mean? Are they geographical terms? Are they cultural terms? Are they racial categories? What are these terms? And the interesting thing is that Latin Americans, Hispanics, have the same set of questions. We really don't know how to define ourselves even, and we often quibble about how to define ourselves. I'll give you an example. The term Hispanic, for many Latin Americans, is a troubling term because it evokes years of colonization under Spain. It evokes a tragic history for many people. The term Latino, for some people, well, I don't know too many Latin Americans who speak Latin, so the term Latino doesn't seem to fit. For some people, Hispanic is too right and Latino too left. Brazilians chafe at being called Hispanic because they weren't colonized by Spain at all. They were colonized by Portugal. The terms Mexican, Mexican-American, Chicano, those are not necessarily the same terms. They don't mean the same thing to the people who use those terms. So this was a very interesting project to see if science, in fact, could help clarify who we are as a people. And when you study any subject, you need to know who they are. That's, that's essential. Now, for me, there was an ulterior motive for this, too, because as a Cuban immigrant and exile in these United States, I have no ready access to my genealogical documents. In other words, I can't trace my family history in a, in the, in a conventional way. So I thought, what a better way to enlighten my students, but also to enlighten myself by using science to jump past genealogy to find out my most ancient roots of who I am as a human being. So I actually went online and I sought out this project uh, sponsored by National Geographic, their Genographic Project, AKA the Geno 2.0 Project, and joined the Human Genome Project. And it was really remarkable. The discoveries were remarkable. I found out that this is a, a project that's global in scope, that thousands of people around the planet are taking, them, are taking part. They are, in fact, contributing their DNA to a huge research study. And, and essentially what the project promised us is that by looking at genetic markers that were deposited by ancient populations around the world thousands of years ago, that they could literally tell us where we came from. And in the process of all of these people, thousands of people around the planet taking part, what National Geographic or the whole, the whole Genome Project is doing is mapping out our human history from our most ancient roots 60,000 years ago to the present age. What an exciting thing to be a part of and to find out where you fit in this whole sequence. And for the seven-year-old kid who was wondering who he was, I would also find out how much Neanderthal blood I had in me. 
Wow, that's exciting. So I went ahead and ordered the kit and uh, received all kinds of information and some very simple instructions, and all this was for a modest price. And I followed the instructions, I swabbed my cheek, and I put the, the sample in the vial, and I sent the vials off to the laboratories, and then I waited, and I waited, and I waited. Six very long weeks, I think actually maybe seven long weeks, waiting for these results. And during the time that I waited, I contemplated what the ramifications were of taking part in the study. And these were more personal ramifications. I would, in fact, be possibly dispelling all kinds of myths, debunking myths that my own family was passing down from generation to generation. How would my family feel about having their stories, their essential stories, their own identities questioned? And I particularly was troubled by what this might mean for my brother and my sister, because we have the exact genetic makeup. Would they be pleased? Would they be happy? Would they be upset that I didn't ask for permission? Well, who knows? But you see, for me, what overrode these questions was the very troubling notion that I had grown up around race. Because you see, every 10 years when we fill out those racial classification boxes on the census report, I was always stymied. I didn't really know what race I am. Latin American, is that a race? Cuban, is that a race? And not just the census report. This was whenever I filled out an application for a driver's license. Many Hispanics, many Latinos, many Latin Americans out there are troubled, are even insulted by the fact that they're asked, of their, or they're asked their race. What's the relevance of knowing what race you are? Well, there was no question about my national identity. I was born in Cuba. My family was very proud of the fact that we had come from that tropical island in the Caribbean. No question about being Cuban, but who we were as a people, our genetic history, was a great mystery to us. That we knew that from genealogy, we had some ideas. For example, we knew that, that my mother's line uh, had migrated from the Canary Islands to Cuba sometime in the 19th century. And so that meant that they were Spaniards. And we also knew that my father's line had also come to, uh, to the New World or to the Americas from, uh, from Spain, from northern Spain, and more recently in the early 20th century. But that's really as far as we got. Beyond that, it was all myth, all lore, and all questions. And so my great hope was that science would, in fact, fill in the blank, so to speak. And some of those stories that we heard as we were growing up were, in fact, had racial overtones, deep racial overtones. And I wanted to clarify, indeed, what those racial, whether any of those racial myths were true. My, uh, I remember growing up as a kid, my elegant grandmother telling my sister and my fair-skinned cousins to guard their, their fair European skin from that tropical sun. Why were we getting copper-toned tans anyway? And then my father, my father's beak nose was often attributed to some elusive Indian ancestor, assuming that coming from the Caribbean, we must have had some Indian ancestry as well. And then my poor little brother suffered the indignity his entire childhood of being called El Negrito Benbon. And that translates to the little darky with the full lips. The assumption there was that he must, or we must all have some African ancestry in our family. So clearly a racial kind of uh, comment or moniker. And then there was this elusive character. This is my grandfather. And there was, in, in the formal portraits of him taken early in the 20th century, there were these vague Asiatic features, and there was this great myth that he had Chinese ancestors. Was any of this true? Any of these stories that I had inherited? Now, Cubans are concerned with the concept of race insofar that, just as all Latin Americans are, are concerned with race, we all understand that Latin Americans are the product of miscegenation. We understand that our nations are the one place on the, human, on, on the planet where humans have mingled and co-mingled for over 500 years, more so than in any other time in human history. So miscegenation has always been a part of our racial miscegenation, has been a part of our, our history. But so has racial discrimination, so has slavery. And many of us coming to America have come to know racial discrimination quite directly, quite actively. A hundred years ago, immigrants came to America by the thousands from all over the world. And in the process, they left behind their ethnicity, they left behind their culture, they left behind their racial identities. And they did this in a process of assimilation. They wanted to Americanize themselves. They wanted sometimes to whiten their family trees. Now, today, we live in a post-Obama world. We live in a world in which being biracial, you can be president and be biracial. Being multiracial is not a stigma. It's not something that you're ashamed of. It's, in fact, in this country, in this society, something that one can be actually quite proud of. 
We've left behind, we've discarded all kinds of egregious notions about race. The concept of racial purity is, uh, is morally repugnant to many of us. Racial discrimination is against the law. So we have changed, our world has changed, our society has changed. And now science is in fact entering this story and, and telling us, in fact, showing us how, how, how blended we really are. In the 1920s, a wonderful man, a prophet, a visionary man of letters by the name of Jose Vasconcelos, he was min a Mexican minister of public education and he wrote a marvelous little book called La Raza Cosmica, or The Cosmic Race. And in this book he argued cutting against the very fiber of society at that time, that the future of humanity rested in miscegenation, in the blending of bloodlines. It was when human beings got over these racial distinctions that we could begin to solve our problems. And of course, he was thinking of colonial Mexico. He was thinking of his own society in which indigenous Americans blended with Europeans to forge a new identity, a new nation. And of course, if you go beyond Mexico, you realize that that was true of Brazil, it was true of Cuba, it was true of many, many places in Latin America. And as I said earlier, a place where it's been almost a laboratory over the last five centuries. But I really think that the one place where this is really happening, it's flowering, is the United States, this mongrel nation. It is in this country today where thousands of people are not only scouring their genealogical documents, but also availing themselves of DNA testing. And in the process, they're discovering that we are much more blended than we thought we were. That we contain in our DNA the roots of many, many more peoples than we thought. So it's a very, very exciting moment. What did I learn personally in all of this? Well, here comes the revelation. I have 1.5% Neanderthal blood. <laughs> so, some of you are sniggering and laughing out there. However, I have 0.5% less than most of you. <laughs> I found out that I am 40% Mediterranean. No surprise there. Given the family Spanish heritage, that makes perfect sense. What was really surprising, though, if you look at those statistics, is the fact that I'm 23% Northern European. Who would have thought that? Germanic peoples. However, if, you, if I remembered something about Spanish history, I should have remembered that, uh, that Spain itself is a country in which ancient Mediterranean tribes blended with ancient Nordic tribes, those Celtic tribes, and so that explains my 23% Nordic blood. Now, what was really surprising to me was how little African blood is in my family tree. Virtually nil, 5% African blood. And I expected to possess a lot more African blood in my lineage, given the fact that Cuba played a prominent role in the African diaspora, that Afro-Cubans have contributed greatly to Cuban culture, dance, music, song, language, literature, you name it, poetry. African-Americans have contributed, and they've all, Afro-Cubans have contributed to the culture. And in the process, they also took part in, in Cuba's most sordid history, and that's a history of slavery and racism. So I expected that those genes would be a part of me, and sadly enough, they're not there. But that 5% of African blood that I do possess is quite fascinating because that links me to our most ancient African progenitors, what the anthropologists call the Y-chromosomal Adam and the mitochondrial Eve, our most ancient mother and father coming from, from Africa. And then what about this guy? Well, it turns out that I am 30% Asian. And that makes me 100% Latin American. What's the ultimate ramification of taking part in a study like this? Participating in something of this kind of global na nature and then sharing those results with my students, with this audience, with my family uh, in far, far away places. What's the personal role in all of this besides debunking some family myths and affirming others? Before I took part in the study, I knew that I belonged to a family and I knew I belonged to two great nations. But now I know that I, where I fit in the whole flow of human history, from our most ancient ancestors to the present age, and that is so remarkably exciting to me. And I also learned in the process that modern science has the capacity to reveal to us many, many mysteries, and in fact to, to debunk many, many myths, including those most egregious myths like racial prejudice and bigotry. And so for that, I'm not only I'm grateful and also very excited. If there's anybody out there today who has the wherewithal and the gumption and perhaps the courage to go forth and have your DNA tested and to risk and to gamble 
may be toppling some of those myths that you grew, up, you grew up with. And in the process of taking part in this study, you realize that you are this much more than you were told as a child or that you've, been, that you've thought about yourself for all this time, then this whole project will have been worth it. Thank you very much.